conditions class, we're not really defining a class like we defined in the last unit. We're not going to write a vending machine or a door or anything. We're just going to write a few static methods. We're making them static so we can run them just by right clicking on the class in the BlueJ project window and running the method we want. We're not really modeling anything. We're just doing a couple of examples together. So if you're like, this doesn't seem like the classes we normally write, you are totally right. Okay, we're just writing a few static methods to explore conditions. Okay? So a little bit different. All right, so here's the first example then. We're gonna start off, so let's start off by modeling the flip of a coin. We're gonna say one is heads and zero is tails, and we wanna print a message that lets the user know, did they get heads or did they get tails? Um, so, good opportunity here to review the math.random method from the last unit. So, we're going to model a coin flip. One will be heads, zero will be tails. So, create a local variable of type int called coin flip. Here's the same little code snippet we're going to write over and over and over again using math.random. From now on, we're going to use math.random and not the random class um, because it's part of the Java AP subset um, and because it's on our quick reference sheet. So if we need like a refresher, we can look at the quick reference sheet. So math.random, that generates a random number between zero inclusive and one exclusive. We will multiply it by two because we want two choices. We will cast it to an int which truncates it. So zero will be zero, and we could get 1.9999999, which will get truncated to one. So there we go. Now we have an integer value of either zero or one. Let's write an if statement. If is the new keyword. We need parentheses after the if. And inside the parentheses, we put what we call a conditional expression. If coin flip is equal to one. Is equal to that question is done by the equality operator, which are two equal signs next to each other. And then we'll have this, another pair of curly brackets here. And we will write system that out that println coin is heads. Oh, oh my, I forgot to write a method. How embarrassing. Um, this is actually really good to see. So sometimes when you're writing code, you get the most bizarre compiler error. You're like, illegal startup type. What does that even mean? And what does it have to do with my if statement, right? What I've learned over the years um, is that when you get some really bizarre compiler errors, the thing to check is maybe you forgot to even write a method. And you're writing your code in the middle of the class as opposed to inside of a method in the class. And that's exactly what I did here. Um, so I need to take a step back here and actually write public static void if example and add some curly brackets for that. I'm going to hit shift command I on my Mac. You can hit shift control I on Windows and it reformats everything nicely. I love that. Much better. All right, so a little bit of a tangent there, but hopefully a useful one. You may do the same thing in the future. Let's, let's really break apart this new if statement. So slash star enter. We'll write a few notes about an if statement. All right, so what does an if statement do? Well, statements in the if block are executed if the conditional expression is true. There's a lot of new words there that we need to define um, and clarify. 
first, let's start on this conditional expression. An expression is any sequence of operations that evaluate to some value. A conditional expression, conditional expressions evaluate to either true or false. That's what we call them conditional expressions. So expressions in general just evaluate to value. A conditional expression will eventually evaluate to true or false. The conditional expression must go inside of parentheses. So here's our new syntax stuff. So this is the conditional expression. Coin flip is equal to one. It is inside of parentheses after the if statement. So that helps explain what this part is. What do we mean by statements in a block? So statements are grouped by blocks. And by blocks, I mean curly brackets. We've been using blocks all along, right? We, use, we have a block here that defines the entire class. We have a block here that defines the entire method. Now we're seeing like we can have blocks inside of methods. Here is the block just for the if statement. The highlighted code will only run if this conditional expression evaluates to true. That's the power of the if statement. Whatever is inside the curly brackets will only run if this is true. One thing I always like to do is to compare and contrast this to Python, a shared experience that many of us have. So here's a difference. They're grouped by blocks, not by indentation like in Python. Okay. So in Python, we use indentation to specify our code blocks. The Java compiler could care less about our indentation. It only cares about curly brackets. Oh, let's add one other Python note while we're at it here. I'm going to add it up here in parentheses. There is no colon after the conditional expression, unlike Python. Okay, so there's another difference with Python. In Python, we put a colon at the end of our if statement. We don't have that here. We just have the parentheses. Very cool. So if coin flip equals one, this code will execute. If coin flip is not equal to one, the next line of code down here will be run instead. Cool. All right, well, what if we want to print, if it's heads, we'll print heads, and if it's tails, we want to print tails. Well, then we use a slightly different type of statement. We use, so another short comment block here, we're going to use what's called the if-else statement. In the if-else statement, the if is the same. The else block is executed if the conditional expression evaluates to false. So I'm going to copy my if statement from up above. And I'm going to add an else statement where I print coin is tails. Um, and then maybe I'm also going to print, maybe we really want heads. Maybe that's the game. So let me add another print message here. Better luck next time. Maybe if they got heads, they won or something. The reason why I added another, another statement here is I just want to be super clear that both of these statements are the else block. 
So if coin flip is equal to run, is equal to one, this highlighted code runs, and then we jump down to here. If coin flip is not equal to one, we skip this block, and we run this block instead, and then we jump down to here. So exactly one of these two blocks is going to be executed. This is something we actually haven't seen before inside of a method. So far, our methods have executed sequentially always, top to bottom, one statement after another. This is the first time where we can branch our execution to do two different options. Question? Um, it will print it twice afterwards, um, simply because I want, we're going to eventually have three independent examples here that I want you to be able to go back and do. Um, but yeah, it's going to print, if the coin, if the coin is heads, it's going to print it twice. Sometimes we have more than two options, right? So let's do an example of that. Um, let's... Let's model the roll of a four-sided die. Model the roll of a four-sided die. Meaning four-sided dies have values between one and four inclusive. And so we'll have a local variable die roll of type int. And we'll use the same technique with math.random. I'll multiply it by four because I want four different choices. I'll force it to be an int, which will give me a range from 0 inclusive to 3 inclusive. So I'm going to add 1 to that int to end up with a range from 1 inclusive to 4 inclusive. We're going to keep writing lines of code like this until you can do it in your sleep. Super common. All right. Slash star enter. Here's our next block. We could do an if, else if, else statement. Another little Python note. In Java, else if is used instead of elif, like in Python. So just a note about that. Keep that straight. I like else if better. I think it reads better. If such and such, else if some other condition, else if again some other condition, and then finally else if we want it. All right, so let's, let's cover all four options. We can say if die roll is equal to one, roll to one. And I'm going to do some copying and pasting here, which is a little dangerous always, but in the interest of time, I encourage you to do it as well. Else if die roll is equal to 2, print roll to 2. I'll copy that block. Else if die roll is equal to 3, roll to 3. And then finally, I'm just going to do else. If it's not a 1, and it's not a 2, and it's not a 3, we must have rolled a 4. That final statement could have been else if die roll is equal to 4. That's fine. We don't have to have an else. We usually do, but it's not required. We don't have to end with an else. So now we've got, now we can handle any number of different options. So by using an if, else if, else if, and else, we can handle any number of different options. Two, 
two potential pitfalls I want to comment on at least. We could write this. So one question you should ask yourself when using if else if type statements is do you have a series of re do you have a, a question with multiple different conditions that you want to check like what is the role of the die in which case if else if else if is appropriate because only one of these code blocks is going to execute alternatively if you have a series of unrelated questions to ask you don't want to use an if else if else if you just want a series of if statements because they're independent of each other so you need to ask yourself before you start writing the code are these conditions related use an if else if or are they independent just use a series of if statements that's the first first tip the second tip is we can ask more sophisticated questions than just is some variable equal to some value. So as an example, here are six um, <coughs> equality and relational operators that we use a lot. We've only been using the equality operator, the is equal to, the double equal sign. But there is a not equal to, which is an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. Um, this is an area where I think Python is more clear than Java. In Java, we use the exclamation point to mean not a lot. That's similar to some other programming languages. We can use less than and greater than. They behave as would be expected. We can also use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Um, just make sure that you put the less than or the greater than symbol first and then the equal sign. It's gotta be in that order, right? So if we start using some of these other relational operators like less than, here's the potential pitfall. The order in which you have your conditional expressions, the order in which you ask your questions um, is really important. You should start with your most restrictive question first and your least restrictive question last, okay? Because if you do your least restrictive question first, and it's true, it's going to do its code block, and it's not even going to look at the rest. Okay? So the order in which you do your conditional expressions is actually really important. So keep that in mind as well. And we're going to practice that. That's a concept that needs practice. All right, I got one more tip for you. We can write code like this. If coin flip is equal to zero, system.out.println, coin is tails, system.out.println, better luck next time. Same thing we did before. Note, I did not use curly brackets. Java is just fine with this. Okay. However, let's see how this actually works. I'm going to actually run this code. I'll switch back to it in just a second. I'm going to run my if example. Huh. Coin is heads. Coin is heads, it prints it twice, just as we were talking about. We got the roll of a four, okay. It's printing better luck next time, but it didn't print coin is tails. Okay. Here's what's going on. This is something to be really careful of. The, the curly brackets are not required for a single statement. However, they are always a good idea. Leaving them out can lead to bugs like this. The indentation implies these two statements go together. That is not how Java interprets this. Java only includes this as part of the if block. This is totally independent, and that statement will always be executed. Java does not care 